Hi, I'm Derek, the owner of Puget Sound Woodworking, and today I'm going to show you how to glue up a large slab out of smaller slabs and uh, just give you advice on how to keep it flat, uh, how to do it efficiently, how not to damage the edges uh, during the clamp up. Okay, so if you look at my setup here, what you're going to see is that my slabs are on top of a uh, grid system of what are called clamping calls, and I'm going to talk about those um, for a little bit. If you look at this uh, right here, you can see that I have um, the length of this call uh, marked on both ends, so I can see how long it is. It's 44 inches. All of my calls have been milled four square to the same thickness, and they all have a radius on the same side, and so if you look here at the arrow, that side has a, has a slight radius to it, and this side has a slight radius to it. If you look down here on the grid system of the clamp up, you can see here that all of the calls that I have underneath the slabs, the arrow is facing up. You might want to film that real quick. See how those arrows are facing up? Now I have a way of making a lot of these really quickly in my shop with templates and the point of that is, is that they're all exactly the same and so they have the same radius and the same dimensions everywhere where it counts and so when I do a huge glue up like this I can actually keep everything straight because I know that everything that I've set up to do the glue up with is, is uh, identical. Let me show you how I go through that. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take wax paper and I'm just going to lay it here so that I don't glue my project to my clamping calls. In truth, when I'm in a hurry, I just you know run wax paper the whole way across, but I'll try to be resource efficient because I'm on YouTube. <laughs> so I'm gonna go here, just like so. All right, so I'm getting ready to do this glue up, and one of the things that um, helps me to get it done more effectively is I'm going to um, devise a way to clamp this tabletop together really firmly without damaging the edges. That's a real common thing when people glue up slabs like this is uh, the clamp heads mangle the edges during the glue up and so this method is going to prevent that from happening. What I'm going to do is I just take these uh, blocks, these are just cut off from old jobs, basically just firewood, and I'm going to take 180 grit sticky back um, Norton or 3M sandpaper, whatever it is off of Amazon, and I'm just going to glue it to one side like this, or, or stick it to one side like this. Okay. Uh, so these have been standing in uh, storage in the shop for a couple of months now, and it turns out that they've um, moved a little bit, and so what I'm going to do is joint the edges uh, to get a good clean uh, glue line again. So I got the wax paper back in. Um, they're still a little twisted, you know, and bowed. They're, you know, but they're giant slabs, but not particularly valuable. Um, these are just Craigslist backyard slabs, you know, that I found for not a whole lot of money, and you know, I can put them together and make something more valuable. But the glue lines are looking a lot better now. So even though it's not going to be a perfect situation it's going to be uh, pretty good. So I'm just about ready to uh, glue this up now for a glue up this large I want to have everything I need uh, out ahead of time so I have a wet uh, paper towel or two to keep my fingers clean so I don't smear uh, wet glue where it doesn't belong all my clamps are ready to go 
my wax papers out. I like these uh, glue bots from FastCap a lot. They're, um, you know, uh, handy to have around all the time. I'm going to use Type Bond 3. I see a lot of people um, biscuit these uh, on um, videos and all that all the time. I think that's um, fine. Uh, in truth, the adhesives are so strong now. And there's so much surface area on this glue up, I don't really think it's um, needed anymore. Um, if there was a little bit of stress naturally on this glue line, like it wasn't going to go together easily or anything like that, I might bother to uh, do that. But this is just my tabletop, and I think it's going to be plenty strong. And so I'm not going to bother with it. Now I could, if this was a smaller tabletop, I would choose right now um, just to smash the two together and distribute the glue um, and then only put a little bit more on the other one once I've got, you know, a fair amount of glue from this one uh, pressed onto it. This glue up is bigger, it's going to take a little time and so I'm going to be happy with more squeeze out, okay? And, um, but it gives me a few more minutes of open clamp time to get this job done. Slabs like this never really quit moving. You know, I have large machining equipment and uh, I'm able to knock this pretty flat, but the truth is, is you know, the slab will want a cup again. You know, it'll want a bow again a little bit over time. It's up to the woodworker to know how to minimize that. So even though the wood is moving, your tabletops are pretty flat anyway. Okay, so you can see how the arrows are facing uh, down. This one I forgot to mark it, but I just eyeballed it. That's it. It's a new one. So you can see the arrows are facing each other. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down one side and secure these real tightly, just like I'm buttoning up a jacket. show off better I would have done a smaller glue up. <laughs> it's, it's a big one. <laughs> so we'll go here. But the truth is I'm always too busy and I need to get this done. I need to get these out of here. <laughs> so, so this is the one we'll use. So you can see this thing is pretty wonky still and it doesn't look like it wants to go together, but watch what happens next. So I come here and then watch, watch, see how far off these are. Watch what happens when I come here. See how they're pulling together all by themselves. I don't have a lot of pressure on here yet, so these slabs, I can still move them together, but they're pulling themselves flat right now and I don't even have to work on it all that hard. Okay, I do this kind of thing all the time. In truth, when I do big, you know, conference tables and stuff like that, generally they're, they're flatter wood. I'm using walnut, you know, that I bought at, you know, a hardwood dealer and, you know, that kind of thing. But, you know, backyard slabs like this are fun to work with. They present special challenges. This wood is more prone to movement, you know, just, it's more finicky. It wasn't grown by, you know, 
professional lumber people, this stuff is, you know, probably never even seen a kiln, right? This is just air dry and it moves more, it warps more, it's multiple, it's, it's got more parasites in it, you know, wood like this is, you know, more of a headache to work with, but it can also have a lot of character, it can be beautiful, okay, just like that. We're getting a lot closer now. So the larger clamps on this side of the table are actually pretty tight right now. These are not tightened. If you look very closely right here, you can see that I have little air gaps. I'm going to be uh, removing that and, and sucking down on that, but not until I get the glue line closed up. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come here and I'm going to take the side with this um, sticky back sandpaper, this 180 bit grit, and I'm going to come right here and I'm going to clamp this down really firmly. Now, if I did not have that sandpaper there and I did this, once I start coming across with pressure, chances are these blocks would just slide and move and it wouldn't work. But the sticky back sandpaper, the frictional coefficient is so high that even when I come this way with a few hundred pounds of pressure, it's unlikely to move that block. Okay? So we go here, and now we go like this. When I was younger and I first took up woodworking, you know, and I started, I started pretty ambitiously, you know, so I was trying to do stuff like this even from a young age. I grew up like this, you know, in my 20s. This would have taken me all day, and it would have taken days to prepare for it. You know, the truth is, is after all this time, better equipment, you know, I can prepare these slabs and get ready for a glue like this in just a few hours. You know, it takes, you got to give it the time it needs to get good at this. Just like that. That wasn't quite right. I'm trying to make the faces of the blocks parallel. Just like that. Now the angle's better. Little changes in clamping pressure matter a lot here. Okay. I tend to start with the worst one. So this edge is the most open and it's going to give me the most headaches. And so I'm going to close that one up first because everything else has got less you know, uh, imperfection in it, and so if I button this one up first, it makes everything else, you know, just kind of fold together easier. If I save this for the last, um, very often, um, what it means is I've, I've created a very stiff spine back there, and so when I try to close up these air gaps here at the end, it just doesn't want to go. Okay. What I'm going to do here is just come vertically on it this way, so I'm just going to put a little wax paper there. I'll take, um, I have a little block bucket. I'll just grab one of these because it's near at hand. Okay, actually, I'm going to grab something longer. And these have already been milled four square, so they'll help to suck the whole thing flat. I'll put one right here. I'll take this one, put it right here. real tight with this, I just want to get them flatter. If I go real tight, I can't close it up. And so now I've sucked it tighter, but this thing is still loose enough that I can pull the slabs together. Now here's something you don't hear talked about nearly enough in woodworking. This is called a cabinet maker's dead blow mallet. And what I can do is begin to pound this whole thing together. This is a rubber head and it's full of sand and it's massively better at not denting the wood. If I use a hammer or a carver's mallet to do this, you're just going to mangle the space when I'm trying to get all this work done. Uh, this is, you know, third or fourth growth uh, local Douglas fir from somebody's backyard. And so this wood is incredibly soft and punky. You can even see it's got some rot here that I'm probably going to remove. And, you know, I'll probably route that out and cut in a little butterfly key and walnut or something like that. You know, make it look decorative and then I'll have to put some kind of preservative in there to poison it, but again, it's my own table, so I don't really care. Um, I'm going to take, and because it is fur, though, I'm going to take a block when I start to pound this thing together, and this will, you know, if, if this was walnut or black cherry or maple, I wouldn't need this block. I could just pound on it, but this wood is so soft, it's a good idea. Okay, so I come here. 
this is already, take a look at it, film that glue line right here real closely and then film how it's still open going down. Once I get this closed up and secure and it's looking really good, I just got to go in one direction. If things are really wonky, there's times when I have to change that around a little bit, but the only way that you'll know when you got to do something like that is to do this a lot. You got to make, you know, you got to do this kind of a glue up, you know, a hundred times in a row before it starts to occur to you how to respond to, uh, you know, problem glue ups basically. So, so we go here. Again, these two blocks are off of the edge, so I don't damage it. In truth, this edge isn't very nice. I don't really care if it gets damaged anyway. You know, I'm just showing you, but there's plenty, there's 10 times a year when I do a glue up like this and a lot of money's on the line, and if I damage that, it's gonna be a problem, and so this is how I handle it. See how this is still not flat? Okay, well, that's where these clamping calls come in, so let's come back to these, everybody. Remember this? Okay, well, watch what I do. I come here. That's like a condenser. You see how half of that air, half of that gap is now gone. I don't have to perfect it. I just have to make it better. Do you understand that? And so once I knock that down a little bit, I come back to these clamps and I start closing down the pressure on the call a little bit. I can come here as well. Uh, no, there are no more out there. If I had a bigger bench, I'd have another call out there. But I come here, like that, and they start coming in. I'm going to come to this one and do the same thing. So I come over here. I may not make it perfect, but I'm darn sure going to make it better. So now that I'm starting to pull this whole thing together, that's where the radius on the calls is really starting to show the benefit of it. Right here, all these gaps are starting to disappear now. The more pressure I put here, this call and this call, they have opposite faced radiuses, and they're starting to get pulled flat. And so basically, it allows this tiny little clamp right here to reach way out and put downward force in the middle of this very wide slab. It's well over 30 inches wide. It looks like it's probably 36, somewhere around there. Okay, come here, come here, just like that. Okay. Yeah, look at the squeeze out I'm getting here now. See how it's it all moved, it's all moving of its own accord. And it's starting to close it all up. Oftentimes, once you've done this enough, in truth, oftentimes, like once I get the wood, you know, I like when I pound on this dead low mallet, basically what I'm doing is I'm refluidizing the glue line. I'm kind of like lowering its frictional coefficient again for a few minutes. It wants to bind and, you know, set up real quickly. And I pound on this stuff hard enough. It's almost like I create enough of an earthquake in the system that it, you know, it, it, it starts moving again real easily. And so these, these are an essential tool for, you know, any kind of quality glue up. I don't normally have to pound on things that hard, but big, you know, big glue ups like this, it's kind of essential, actually. I'm going to come here. I'm going to put one more out here. Again. there we're going to start buttoning this up now and finish it up this one is not you know real stressful like I could just hold this with my hand and flatten it okay, just like so that's plenty if I've come down so tight on these vertical clamps that it's not wanting to suck together and it kind of feels like maybe that's happening what I'm going to do is come to one side and relieve pressure and so I just loosen that up a little bit I'm going to loosen this one up a little bit Okay, so basically they were pulled flat, and all I did by relieving the clamp pressure, I just allowed them to flare out again a little bit like that, and then I can get this glue line moving. And then after I suck it together, you know, and I've got it like factory flat and clean, I'm going to pull these, I'm going to put pressure back on these again. Okay, so I come here. Looks like I need more clamps to 
This is why I put extra glue on this. I need this added time. See how in here it's starting to move? Look at all this fresh squeeze out. Look at that last pounding. Again, that sandpaper is essential. Okay? Okay, so you can see that there's one area where I hadn't quite closed it up yet, and so I just put, you know, more of these on. I guess you can see now, this is why they say you can never have enough clamps. I mean, this is what it's like sometimes. You've got to have them. You don't, I, when I was younger, you know, and I was first getting into this, I can remember, you know, I had friends that were woodworkers too, and I would call them up and go, you know, come over now and bring every clamp you have if they were available. You know, to get something done, and as the years go by, you know, go to a garage sale. <laughs> you know, just the eye can never sleep. You got to stay on the hunt. You got to, you know, I'm I'm still building my shop. After 27 years, I've spent you know, a thousand dollars in tools in the last few weeks. It's, it's never done. Okay. Go here. Ah. Come with more pressure. Okay, so you can see I'm almost done now. Uh, the other side of the table is already, you know, factory closed up. This side has still got a little bit of uh, black lining, giving me a few, a uh, few headaches. Um, if I was real desperate to put more pressure on this, I could switch from these guys to these, and it'll, you know, this is a better convincer. It's got a lot more pounds per square inch of pressure. Okay, when they're when they're uh, fully loaded up, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna remove this one temporarily. off of it. I like these clamps a lot and if I had, you know, if there's more of a standard, you know, like fine furniture glue up with just like store-bought cherry and walnut, I wouldn't need this, but for big old headache slabs like this, I'm going to do it. I think I'm here. Like I, these, you know, when I was younger, there was one of these things. These days I think of them as more of a blunt force instrument. I could always put another one in. Tiny differences in clamp position matter a lot. You know, this is not a particularly sophisticated glue up. I mean, this is just a big, you know, headache slab of wood. It's almost like a Fred Flintstone kind of glue up, but sometimes that's what's called for. And so, you know, just remember that this kind of thing, you gotta do it a lot. You gotta make a, you gotta, it's kind of essential that you make a lot of mistakes, you know, um, and then if you do it right, you know, make as many mistakes as you can, as fast as you can, without hurting yourself. But each time you do make them, you know, classify them, figure out, you know, precisely as you can, what mistake did you make? Like, you know, and then like you got to buy, build, learn, or all three, like this permanent institutional solution so that that class of mistake can never happen again. Once you solve enough mistakes like or problems like that, you're starting to have a shop, you know, and it, it could be where, you know, you come up with a solution that works, you know, for a certain amount of time, you know, but then two, three years later down the road, it's like it's no longer, you know, uh, cutting the mustard for you. Like the, the performance, the efficiency, you know, isn't there. You know, great. So that's time to up your game again. Go learn something new. Figure out a new jig. Go buy a new tool. Whatever it takes, keep moving forward. It's the only way to get good at this. Okay. So this clamp up is pretty much done now. Um, what you can see, well, I've got to let it sit overnight at least, you know, somewhere around there. 
normally, a, you know, like a cabinet door, glow up with type bond three, maybe 180, you know, minutes, somewhere around there, summertime, a little bit less time. This has got to sit overnight. I've got to let it stay under clamp until the glue is entirely cured. Um, the important thing about this is that you saw in the video how warped and twisted these slabs were when I started to glue them together. I'm going to show you now, if you, if you take a look down these call lines, you can see how flat those, in parallel those clamping calls are. Just check that out. And that helps you a lot. When I pull these clamps tomorrow, it helps to suck this whole thing flat. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. This is the first time I've done this, and so I did um, forget a couple things, but uh, I hope you learned a lot, and uh, keep after it. Working is a ton of fun, and it's worth it. Thanks a lot.